Hello and welcome to another uh, webinar, uh, E4M uh, virtual series. We have uh, uh, this special webinar and we have a very special guest today, uh, live from New York, uh, Mr. Barry Frey. Uh, he is the president and CEO of uh, DPAA, which is a trade and marketing uh, association that is leading the digital transformation of the outdoor uh, industry. And uh, its members include uh, publishers, uh, ad tech companies, uh, media agencies, research and hardware companies. Uh, before I begin, I want to announce that uh, uh, we are live on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and uh, uh, on our website, exchangeformedia.com. Uh, uh, we are also live on YouTube. Uh, something rare, I mean, not everybody is doing this simulcast that we are managing to do here. Um, welcome, Barry, uh, to this uh, exclusive uh, uh, discussion. Um, uh, first, tell me, I mean, we uh, are reading and uh, watching a lot about New York. How is the situation uh, right now there? So, yeah, New York, we, we've had a difficult time. Uh, certainly, we've been the epicenter of, uh, of the United States and, and, and certainly more issues than um, most places in the world. Uh, the good news is we're turning the corner now, and uh, we've had some terrific leadership from uh, our governor, Andrew Cuomo, and uh, you know we've been all basically sequestered and quarantined in our homes, uh, but people are getting by, and uh, you know we've, we've definitely turned the corner. Um, the hospitals are managing better, and um, I think the, uh, the separation and the you know, people wearing masks and keeping distancing is has not only flattened the curve, but finally we're, we're starting to see a downturn, which is great. And, and uh, thank you, uh, Ruhel, for doing this today. I appreciate it. It's great to see you. I, I do want to send my condolences. I know that a couple of uh, you know, big Bollywood stars have, have just passed um, you know, in recent days, and I, I know how important that is, and they, and they were relatively young. So you know, I'm sorry to all my, my friends in, in India. I, I love your country. I have been there a few times. I, I helped... Uh, uh, I ran sales and marketing globally for the Hallmark Channel, and uh, so I, I did spend a lot of time in Mumbai, but uh, I wanted to send my condolences. And, and then, of course, uh, uh, some highs to my friends who I know are, are watching this uh, um, all over uh, India. So um, thank you for having me. Thank you so much for joining us. Um, so we can start. Uh, uh, we will have a, a later part of it for questions and, questions and answers from our uh, viewers. Uh, let me start with my first question uh, about the outdoor industry, something unprecedented. This industry depends, it does not understand social distancing. It depends on the people in the streets, uh, out on the highways, and now we are faced with a difficult situation. How is the industry dealing with this unprecedented uh, times that I may call it? Yeah, it's a great question. It is certainly unprecedented. We, we've never seen this before. Um, and we're coming off, uh, you know, certainly uh, great momentum around the world for out of home and especially digital out of home. We, most of our members around the world had a, uh, the largest uh, first quarter ever. And then, of course, you know, second quarter hit. Uh, what's happening, you know, first and foremost, our members are, are looking out for their teams, their staff, uh, making sure the health is okay. And, uh, organizing principles so everybody has been able to work at home successfully and I'm sure like you know what's happened in other countries and I'm sure in India um, management is seeking to uh, connect virtually and for the most part everybody you know has been doing that at the same time we're uh, carefully tracking traffic uh, patterns and the good news is in many pockets of the world traffic is coming back and coming out you know, all of media has been impacted by this. And of course, you know, people are not out as much. So, you know, we've been impacted a little bit more, but it's, it's therefore been a time for us to reimagine uh, a little bit. And as opposed to just kind of planning on, on coming out and reemerging, we think we're going to reimagine and come out better with a, a lot of uh, creativity, a lot of ideas. You know, we, uh, in the digital out of home world, we've been uh, fortunate to have the ability to put messaging on, uh, on screens, and I think that will carry in uh, as a value to councils, municipalities, and, and government when we come back. 
So, you know, first it's managing teams. Of course, it's also managing the businesses and, and really managing cash uh, for all businesses. And a lot of our members around the world have done that successfully. And uh, we're, we're planning for uh, emerging. And like I said, the, the good news is we are seeing traffic, uh, you know, coming out. And, and the fundamentals of the out-of-home business are still very much uh, very strong and that, that will showcase itself when we reemerge. Right. Jimmy, if uh, you must be in touch with all your stakeholders and if you can just tell me individually, how are they uh, trying to soft land in this situation? You know, how are they planning to minimize the kind of impact they are uh, going through? Anything that you have heard from them, how they are tackling individually these situations? Yeah, back to the kind of reinvention. You know, we have, uh, you know, a variety of members that have sought uh, ventures of how to work together in terms of pooling their resources. Maybe it's sales, uh, maybe it's marketing, um, maybe it's different use of their physical spaces uh, for more and, uh, and unique advertising services. So everybody's kind of taking a look at their core businesses. Now, of course, we have uh, many members that are each actually in or around or on highways and roadways to areas that are still traffic. That is supermarkets, markets, grocers, uh, point of care, uh, you know, the specialists and uh, in general practitioner doctors around the world are still practicing medicine. So we have, uh, and then pharmacies. So the pharmacies, the supermarkets, the food areas are still experiencing traffic, even though people are social distancing and they've set up systems. So what's happened is that those areas are certainly getting the, the eyeballs and the impressions, and then people on their way there are, are getting that as well. So we're continuing in that fashion. And then uh, our businesses are opening up uh, according to where the regions are opening up. And then our companies and members that have physical spaces like malls or uh, theaters, uh, uh, other places, they are setting a lot of social distancing and sanitizing guidelines, which uh, people will follow and society will get used to, uh, at least in the short term until, you know, vaccines and, and cures are fully established. Right. I just want to make this announcement that we are live on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, on our website and uh, YouTube, and you can post your questions, send it to us. We will ask Barry uh, those questions. Uh, Barry, I want to understand uh, the extent of this uh, loss in terms of numbers. Are there any early figures that you could share with us uh, globally? What is the extent of loss that outdoor is going through at this moment? Well, what I could say, as I mentioned before, uh, Across the board, most of our members around the world had uh, huge momentum coming into this and a great first quarter. Of course, second quarter, roundly around the world, has been uh, quite down. Now, to the same uh, degree, you know, all media has been down and all media has been compromised for the likely reasons that we all know. But of course, you know, Out of Home has experienced a, a difficult second quarter. Uh, we believe that third quarter would probably at this point be somewhat challenging at the same time due to uh, the nature of fourth quarter and other factors, which I can talk about, we are looking at a strong fourth quarter. And what I mean by that is that um, relative to other media, what we're seeing as we emerge into what we believe will be a strong fourth quarter is that generally around the world, television, uh, cable, satellite, and advertiser-supported broadcasts and terrestrial uh, have been in decline. And uh, that is, um, you know, while the over-the-top television has certainly done well, there's a lot of impressions that, and viewership and the medium of media inside the home, whether it be terrestrial television or print, uh, is certainly uh, not as used as it once was. So that makes for a good case uh, for out of home. And of course, the the real powerful part of this is the digitization of out of home. And what that means uh, first and foremost is uh, uh, the ability to uh, get signals and get content up very quickly. So that's why we believe that we'll see fourth quarter emerging because we can, through digital out of home, basically get content and advertisers on screen quickly. Uh, it enables programmatic around the world. 
and where if you look at you know the high percentages of advertising now traded programmatically as we have now entered the programmatic world for out of home that will once again enable not only great targeting ROI and metrics but also a uh, um, a shifting of media to this medium and then also keep in mind as we do come into this kind of fourth quarter period is that um, for television advertising if you look at it television production is largely shut down around the world as is film production as is Bollywood uh, that's going to take some time to ramp up which the quality of television may not be what it once was and then if we look at commercial production for television that's all shut down as well so to get advertising up for out of home is going to be a little bit quicker and easier. The other part to remember, and this is where we believe will emerge in fourth quarter strong, as I said, the fundamentals are good. And if you look once again at other media, out of home, you can't block the ads. Um, with uh, you know digital out of home, you don't have the issues of, of bot fraud or brand safety issues that occur in other media. And, uh, you know, overall, uh, it is a, a brand safe, uh, strong environment where also viewability is not an issue. You see the whole ad for the whole time. So the fundamentals, as, as you could see me recalling, are still there. And as we are seeing traffic patterns now grow already, the U.S. is up about 6%. At the same time, the big upfront in the U.S. where, you know, the new broadcast season is unveiled and $20 billion is spent uh, up front in advertising for the year, that's going to be uh, small or non-existent or virtual or possibly one may call it an unfront. So, um, you know, that's where I see uh, first quarter strong, second quarter very difficult, third quarter coming back, and then fourth quarter we anticipate uh, to be very robust. You know, there's another... Um uh, aspect of this uh, outdoor industry that uh, this pandemic might there might be two eras before COVID and after COVID and this might permanently alter the way we consume media. For example, uh, social distancing might be become a norm, you know, for the next few years, or it might become essential part of our uh, lives as we move on. Tell me, is there a fear among outdoor players? Uh, about getting to the pre-COVID uh, era wherein the ads, ad spends used to flow easily. Now you have stopped live sporting. People are not on the streets. Would there be a permanent altering of the uh, media consumption la landscape for outdoor players? Do you think that is a possibility? Well, I, I say, uh, Ruhel, you can uh, maybe tweak... Um human nature, but you can't totally change uh, human nature. And humans will always want to get out. They'll always want to connect. They'll always want to be together. And I, you know, I personally, as a New Yorker, I experienced 9-11 uh, too close. Uh, I actually saw the second plane uh, go into the World Trade Center and explode in a fireball of fury that sent an electric shock through my body. And and I knew that the world and myself were, were going to be altered by this experience. And at that time, you know, we were looking at, will people travel again? Will people get on airplanes? Will people go to airports? And what happened is that, um, you know, like a, a good Darwinian theory, human nature adapted. And, you know, uh, if we were to say to people before 9-11 to, to go, uh, you know, from Delhi to Mumbai, you had to take off your belt and take off your shoes and, and tiptoe through and get people uh, touching you up and down. You would say, really? But we adapted to that after 9-11 and uh, airline travel since 9-11 skyrocketed. So I think that in the short term, there will be adaptions uh, that will have to happen in terms of uh, humans getting out. Um, we've talked to, like I said, some of our transit or mall owners and real estate people around, and they're already setting patterns of sanitizing when you first come in, of checking temperatures when you first come in, of social distancing. Retail may have uh, you know, rules where you don't have to, you're not going to be touching something and picking it up unless you're buying it. And these systems will be set up, you know, as we've seen throughout centuries, uh, uh, human nature can be very adaptive. So 
I think the core is that back to the kind of 9-11 example, people still wanted to travel and connect for personal business. People will still need to be in the sunshine. People will still want to be out. And uh, we will make certain adaptions, but uh, you can't stop human nature. And what I would say that I think is going to be very interesting, and I'm a, I've been a big uh, media uh, uh, student and, 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 and professor of media. And uh, in my studies, there's a, there was a great prognosticator, Marshall McLuhan, who uh, basically coined all of the phrases of the future of media and global media. And, and one of his great terms was called the medium is the message. And that refers to the fact that where the environment is depends how we receive the message. As an example, if you see an ad on a trash can, what do you think about the brand? But when you see an ad in, in a beautiful home like you're sitting now, how do you perceive that brand? Uh, so to wit, uh, what I would say is that when we do come out and people are starting to emerge and uh, outside will be a happy place, it'll be a great environment where people will be happy and, and open to messaging and in good moods and open to new brands and new concepts and new products and services. So we're actually going to be seeing a resurgence where the environment for being out is going to be really great. And then if you think about it too, traditionally, you know, television has been, uh, you know, branding and reach medium. And as traditional inside the home over the air commercial TV, you know, is, is getting usurped by over the top and other digital media, um, we can now take that mantle of out of home, of being the broad branding and reach medium, which is uh, a very positive thing for us. Uh, I want to uh, tell my viewers that you can send in your questions. Uh, we will be uh, in next 10 minutes going with a Q&A round. Uh, I just want uh, to ask you this, that if uh, the, once the lockdown opens, you know, gradually it's going to open in some way, in a phased manner, uh, I mean, do you think the federal spends on outdoor uh, going up in some way, the government spends going up because for them it's a medium to um, kind of, you know, raise that awareness that is needed. Do you think the spends from federal government and the government spends are going to go up uh, if it opens in a phased way? I think I'm understanding you. Are you saying will they spend from government for out-of-home advertising? Yes, yes. Uh, yes. Um, well, it's a great question because it's already happening and what's already happening and during this unfortunate experience is that we are now seeing through the digitization of out of home that the screens can now take content and messaging. For example, you mentioned all of our membership around the world being media owners. And by the way, our media owners go from Times Square to Piccadilly Circus to Indian train stations and uh, programmatic companies, research companies, Nielsen, Newstar, uh, and uh, we've got mobile companies and DSPs and SSPs that are now putting a lot of digital money into the space. Uh, so uh, what the other part of our membership that is uh, a significant part are content companies. So we have Bloomberg Television as a member, AccuWeather is a member, we have Chive and Cheddar TV, Live Times Live is a great uh, live music series. And that is because the screens can now have content and all of the DPW research around the world has shown that if there's content on screens, in addition to ads, people will watch, people will engage and advertisers and planners around the world will spend more money. Long way of saying is that consumers, governments, public services are getting used to putting content on screens, especially now. So coming out of this, as we still in government will need to message, you know, keep your social distance or, or wear your mask, you know, our digital screens will have a great opportunity for that. And look, I know in India, and by the way, congratulations, it looks like there's a 25% uh, movement now uh, in terms of, uh, you know, the coronavirus you know, settling up. So congratulations. I'm so glad to hear that. Uh, and I also know, you know, the government in India is, uh, you know, looking forward to digital screens where there's less kind of print screens around and now we can have more digital out. So the digital uh, is a great communication method, not just for advertising, but for public messaging. And what I would say is we actually developed the first global digital out of home public service announcement. Uh, and uh, it was done by a hot Brooklyn agency. 
And it's been running all over the world in Japan and UK and US and Canada and Dubai and many places. And this DPAA uh, built campaign with an agency called Madwell uh, talked to uh, people that are uh, need to work, the essential workers, and it, it basically supported them. At the same time, it said to people that uh, weren't outside that shouldn't be to get back home. And then it told people that needed to be out to, um, to kind of you know, social distance. So uh, the messaging on screens to, uh, in a long way, give you the answer has, uh, uh, is something that has happened and will proliferate uh, even more so. Uh, Barry, at the start of this uh, live uh, streaming, uh, we were discussing, <clears throat> I'm sorry, we're discussing that uh, uh, you're planning an India chapter. DPA is planning to come to India. As that's uh, that's, that's the first time anybody's heard that, Ruhel. That's, uh, yes. that's our, uh, it's a big announcement for today. So, uh, so can, you, can, you, uh, can you explain it a little bit more? Uh, what exactly is the plan like and how soon are you going to roll it out? Sure. And I can't speak that much about it, but uh, you're an intrepid reporter and you figured out how to break, break some news. So congratulations. Uh, yes, we've established a chapter. Um, we have a great local partner um, in India, and it's a business that is very experienced in this area in advertising media as well as out of home and digital. And we'll probably be announcing the details in maybe within the next month is where we'll be having the details on that. I'm sorry I can't speak too much about it, but uh, since you've uh, undercover, uncovered this, uh, I'm, I'm happy to say that you're correct and we are very pleased about it. We, we, we've been operating all over the world and because of the interest and we've got some great members, you know, we have uh, uh, Vioma and Shumitro there in, uh, in India. Um, you know, we have Anil at Armored Digital. We have a lot of other folks that are members and because of the interest today and what we've seen around the world um, uh, tomorrow, for all the reasons that we're talking about, we see this as a great, a big growth area. And I think uh, with DPAA's global practices, research, studies, and the way that we've really connected a global community, we will see uh, out of home and digital of home connect even more uh, in a unified fashion in India. And that's part of our goal to do that with a you know, relative disparate um, you know, group of companies at the moment. Right. So we'll go to the audience questions. We have a lot of questions coming in. and. Um, my first question is, um, the first question is from Shalini Shankar. Uh, she's asking, is uh, repositioning and collaboration and reinventing, are these the way forward for the uh, sector, for the outdoor industry going forward? Yes, um, I would say yes and add to it. I, I would say that we're, we're on a great foundation at the moment, and as I mentioned, relative to the media, the digitization that's rolling out, uh, all of the core fundamentals that I mentioned earlier, plus this is giving us a very good time to, and I, I kind of prefer to look at it as reimagining. And I think it's, I think it's so important for all businesses at this time and all individuals to take a pause in what we're doing, to see what's real in life, to kind of look at things a little differently because we need to move forward. There, you know, there's no more yesterdays. It's all about tomorrow now. And the more we can reimagine and, and you know, serve our customers better, uh, serve uh, our, and unify better and come together. Look, we're, you know, it's a great question because the models for our, our livelihood and our lives that we're all in this together uh, also pertains to business. So, yes, we will see that in part of global uh, DPAA now establishing chapters around the world will we'll do this. Right. Uh, there's a question uh, by... Uh Sanjeev Reddy, and uh, he's asking, what will be the impact of COVID on transit media like metro, train branding, airports? Uh, what kind of impact? And uh, maybe he also wants to know how would it pan out? Yes, yeah, so, um, you know, certainly those areas uh, are not experiencing much traffic around the world. But, you know, like I said, people will want to travel again, they will need to get to work. And I think what we'll see, similar to the 9-11 notion that I mentioned, um, you know, establishment of certain protocols that will be challenging at the beginning, 
and we've spoken to a lot of our members, whether it's separation, sanitation, you know, lines, you know, we're seeing that in supermarkets around the world now where, you know, there's, uh, you know, certain lines and separation and barriers set up. And I think, and you'll see that at the beginning stages in transit, um, you know, throughout the world, as well as in the uh, airport areas. Uh, question from Sri Ranga Sudhakara Vayoma Media. Uh, the question is, is uh, outdoor plus mobile going to be a big push post-COVID? Yeah, great question from my friends at Vioma, a great, great company. Uh, yes, and it's, it's uh, what we've seen is that we actually, uh, in Digital Out of Home, have a love affair with mobile. And why is that? Uh, first of all, the mobile data is very good. We can understand, and we're not interested in the personal nature of people. We're really more interested in cohorts. So we use a lot of mobile data around the world to not um, not understand um, who but what so it's not as if we we're, we're not doing any public uh, personal identifiable information we don't we like Ruhel but we don't care about you that much in measurement uh, we care about you know you know good men uh, 18 to 34 that are in the market for you know sneakers so firstly we use mobile data to identify cohorts then uh, once uh, those cohorts are in and about or near a screen they can be targeted with ads because of the mobile data. Uh, next, we can retarget the ad. So you basically have an ad running on a digital screen and then an ad running a mobile where it has a 40% lift or one plus one equals three in terms of being able to deliver more impactful messaging on two media. And then lastly, uh, we can use mobile data to understand how this is proven in ROI or KPI by consumers going into stores, showing lift there, as well as showing lift on websites. So uh, mobile data uh, is in, intricately uh, tied to digital out of home. Our members uh, include Ground Truth as a board member, a great mobile company. Place IQ is a member. Um, we've got uh, M4 is a member. Um, and, uh, you know, Mobile Fuse is a member around the world. So, uh, yes, it's, it's an integral part of... Uh, of working together for a powerful combination. Uh, there's a follow-up question uh, uh, by Sri Ranga. Uh, the question is, uh, do you see global investors looking at Indian media outdoor assets? Do I see global? Investors looking at Indian oh. media outdoor assets. Yes, yes, I do. I, I, I see two things. I see global investors and I see global advertisers also now taking advantage of it. Uh, yes, you know, there will be some more consolidation in the industry. Um, private equity has jumped in big time. I think you're going to see uh, coming out of this, people seeing that the fundamentals of out of home are, are excellent and uh, therefore the growth and, you know, by witness that DPAA is uh, not only in India already, but will be establishing a, a, a firm, um, you know, uh, business there uh, shows that there will be more investment coming. Right. Sorry. Sorry. Um, yeah, it's funny. It goes from uh, your, your headshot to you lounging on the uh, the couch over there. I, I saw the cigars. I was reading um, a very back. long question and I wish that was true. Uh, this is from Bhaskar Ghosh. I will break this question into two parts. The first part is uh, what would be the importance of outdoor to media planners now with the increase in time spent at home and increase in TV and digital? Uh, what is the, the first part is what is the importance to uh, out of home to media planners now? And then the second part was? Uh, second part is uh, how will in-store advertising um, increase or decrease post-COVID? Uh, okay, let me... Do the second one first. So actually, in-store advertising has grown, of course. Uh, we've got many members with screens in supermarkets, groceries, pharmacy, big box stores. Uh, and that's become an increasingly area due to the power of digital advertising, due to the proliferation of high-quality screens. And uh, also, as I mentioned earlier, the ability to put good information on uh, the screen. So, you know, right now the information may be on navigating around the store. Soon it may be about keeping your social distance. That's a 
a big area. We've got many members around the world in supermarkets, pharmacies, and we even have a, a, a great member that's in the parking lots uh, with charging stations called Volta that uh, as people are driving up to these stores, um, that happens. And then in terms of media planners, we do media planner studies uh, every year in different parts of the world, and we'll be doing one soon in India. And what the media planners tell us is not only an increasing uh, percent of spend on out of home, but interesting reasons and interesting facts and figures. So what we've seen is that, as an example, I'll give you in the U.S., about 4% of uh, media spend uh, is planned for uh, out of home. When we survey the planners throughout and we say to them, if out of home is now more digital, if it's got more data uh, due to the digital nature, to the mobile, as we discussed, if we've taken out the friction of the business, we've taken out the legacy history and heritage of, of spend, what do you believe, uh, and we add in programmatic, uh, all to make it easier, uh, what would you believe would be the, the value that you would spend of your client's budget on out of home? And the numbers come up over 20%, which is really interesting. But, you know, of course, there's always, uh, you know, kind of, uh, you know, it takes a while as, as, as technology comes to media for the advertising to follow the advantages. So there is that kind of, you know, uh, you know, slow shift. But when we ask the question, if we take out the friction, the heritage, the legacy, and we started fresh today with all these opportunities and the fundamentals, what would be an ideal spend? It, it is quite high. So that's a very exciting opportunity for tending to, you know, more growth when we come out of this. And that's a good question, by the way. That's okay. Um, there's a question from Sundar Hemrajani. Uh, he's asking, uh, due to slowing economy, overall media spends have been under stress for the last three quarters. Uh, outdoor is approximately 5% of the media buy in any case uh, and has been impacted by this lockdown. What are your suggestions for the industry players? For the out-of-home industry players? Sure. So uh, as I mentioned before, reimagining, you know, reimagine your business. Um, can you collaborate on Salesforce? Can you collaborate on marketing? Uh, can you jump into programmatic where there's more efficiencies, better targeting economy of scale? How are you using mobile for data? Um, how are you performing and delivering to your clients? And also this is an amazing time for every media owner around the world and every business around the world to engage at a, a bigger and deeper level with the constituents. I, I, I interviewed the, uh, the CEO of CARA uh, the other day, and uh, we, we do something that I'll, I'll tell you about. She said to me that she's used to, she has 2,000 employees, and she's used to traveling a couple of few times a year to each office and visiting with people. Now she's had the opportunity to, to meet the long tail of offices and long tail of people on video that she never, never would have seen. So I, I stress to everybody, this is a great time to not only rethink, reimagine, and you know, figure out what's really important in life and in business, but to connect on a much deeper level. And the way that we've been doing this is actually DPAA Connects. It's a news series where we've interviewed CEOs of global ad agencies, heads of marketing globally for, uh, and media for MasterCard, for IBM, for Microsoft. And what we're doing is we're keeping these folks top of mind about a home at the same time, our members are getting a much broader understanding of what's important to these, these real leaders in the space. So we've used this time to connect on a bigger and deeper level to the advertising leaders. We usually do this through an array of events. Our, our DPAA Global Everywhere, Video Everywhere Summit last year attracted over a thousand people and we'll be doing events uh, in Mumbai coming up and possibly in Delhi as well. Uh, in addition to that, we've used this time to develop what we call DPAA Davos, which is where we get our global members about 25 at a time, 25, 30 at a time on multiple calls, video calls uh, every morning where people get a chance to exchange uh, ideas and best practices and, and what are the challenges and what are the opportunities. And it's been a great sharing mechanism for our global members, like I said, that include um, out-of-home companies, digital companies, mobile companies.
companies, content, research, data, hardware companies that are all right. over the world. We are getting a lot of questions, so we have another 15 minutes and we'll try to pack as many. So this one is from uh, YouTube and uh, um, Mr. Partho Roy wants to know uh, what will it take for advertisers to come back to OH, uh, to outdoor, given the change in, uh, uh, in the patterns in which, you know, uh, the cycles that have been impacted. What should OH uh, stakeholders additionally do to give brands the confidence that they need in this moment? Okay, once again, I'll take the second one first. Um, I think the confidence comes from the increased data available to out of home today. As mentioned from the great question from Bioma earlier, uh, mobile data, mobile ID data is really helping us understand audiences, traffic flow, uh, and others. And uh, in a, you know, a very good specific pattern in terms of that, programmatic is also delivering. So I would encourage uh, the use of the digital functionalities of programmatic, of digital data, of KPIs, of putting content on screens, that will all help. And after I did all that answer, I forgot the first question. Uh, okay, um, uh, I would, uh, okay, one second. I'll just come to it quickly. So the first question was, uh, given the change that has happened uh, in the domain. Okay, so, so part of it is also what I mentioned before about the additional KPIs and the tremendous new opportunities uh, and values of uh, digital out of home in, in addition to out of home. And then as I mentioned too, um, you know, out of home being a great branding and reach medium can now take some of the mantle that television has had in terms of delivering branding and advertising messages. And what I would add to that is that now because of the digital nature, which, you know, for the most part, uh, out of home has been a great digital branding. Big messages, get great reach out there. It's worked very well at the top of the advertising funnel. And this is what advertisers uh, are starting to understand, is that now, because we can actually target audiences, we can actually affect consideration and show lift in activity and sales, we are now operating at the top right through to the bottom of the marketing funnel. So these are the aspects that are exciting advertisers around the world. Uh, next question is from uh, Jayesh Yagnik. Uh, he's asking, uh, the outdoor industry has virtually become nil in current scenario. According to you, will it bounce back like a U-shape curve or we have to wait yeah, longer I, I to think, get back I to I think normal. it's going to mimic society. I, I think we're looking at a, I think we're looking at a U-shape. You know, early on, uh, a lot of businesses were anticipating this V. And, uh, you know, I think given the nature of this terrible disease, where we're seeing kind of an upside down U in terms of coming up, the curve flattening, um, staying at a, a, a level for a while and then coming down, I think we're going to see a lot of business do kind of a, a U shape, which is the reverse of the flattening of the curve. And uh, for everything I mentioned, in terms of uh, people getting out and, uh, you know, and, and by the way, as we are seeing, all regions around the world and countries will have a very staggered pattern. So I think that on a global basis will also kind of, you know, foster this U-shape because some places will emerge. I mean, you've made great 25% progress recently. Um, New Jersey in the, is opening up uh, for people to come outside next week. Uh, some states like Georgia have opened up and New York and others will, will take some more time. So therefore, I think if you aggregate that all together, we're, we're really looking at a U-shape. Uh, next question is from uh, Satyan Sharma. He's asking, uh, post-COVID, things are uh, going to be different. Uh, given the changes in consumer audience behavior, uh, could you shed some light on audience measurement best practices and its ability to help in the post-COVID business? Yeah, so I've kind of touched on that, you know, utilization of, of mobile data, uh, of, um, you know, different geotemporal uh, temporal, um, data. A lot of our programmatic companies, a, a company like, Hi, like Hivestack now, uh, you know, has recently uh, organized um, an understanding of where uh, medical practitioners are, and then uh, 
basically been able to advertise them as they understand the, the traffic pattern. So this is um, a great opportunity for out of home to really use uh, you know, mobile geotemporal data and others to, to target audiences. Next. I mean, program, by the way, our programmatic companies are really doing great in the space. Uh, um, you know, Vistar, Hivestack, Vue, um, coming out of JC Decode, Place Exchange. Uh, it's a great opportunity to tap into this. And what really happens here is not only does out of home grow the out of home budgets, but what really happens is as we're offering a programmatic and digital equation, what's flowing in, we've seen this in some of the advanced markets in, in digital out of home, is that uh, now out of home is attracting digital monies. We're attracting location budgets, mobile budgets, and very excitingly, video budgets that heretofore would have ended up on video online or on television, but the capabilities to run content and digital content to, to have, uh, you know, tap into the programmatic uh, trading desks. And we have a lot of members that are also trading desks and DSPs and SSPs, and we'll actually be announcing two, uh, two great global companies one big trading desk and one huge uh, DSP and SSP that is now increasingly excited about the out-of-home space. So stay tuned. Uh, those will be announcements forthcoming too, which will enable those screens that you see to be running digital monies from digital ad budgets. Next one is from Kumar uh, Sita Raman. Uh, he's asking, uh, are digital outdoor business models that work in the U.S. relevant to India where the seascapes, uh, traffic patterns, and demographics are fundamentally very different? Well, yeah, I think, you know, uh, every country has its unique nature and proclivities. And uh, I think that uh, every, the success of, of out of home and digital out of home is, is adapting. And that's part of the reason why we're establishing a local partnership with a great partner in, uh, in India. I have run um, media businesses all over the world. As I mentioned earlier, I, I was in charge of sales and marketing for Hallmark Channel in India. And, uh, you know, the real key is to, uh, you know, do what, uh, what works globally um, and thinking that way, but, uh, but act uh, locally. And that uh, is an important premise of, of brands, of media companies. And if you uh, really understand what happens locally and the digitization of out of home will enable adaption easier than uh, than more analog forms. Uh, we still have a lot of questions coming, but I think we are short on time. And uh, I will have to thank you uh, for joining us uh, for this wonderful uh, conversation. And we have another around 50 questions unanswered, but uh, maybe uh, we can look at doing another longish uh, session next time. Well, and I want to thank you, Rahul, because um, I, I, first of all, I want to thank everybody for staying till 5.30, 6 o'clock at night uh, to do this. I woke up at 5 a.m. this morning to do this. But I think what's really important here is that, you know, we are cocooning for a while, and uh, that is happening. But for everybody that knows what happens when a cocoon uh, in the springtime and summer emerges, we know that it turns into a big, beautiful butterfly. And that is what is going to be happening to out of home. We are cocooning, fair to say. It's a challenging time, but as all good cocoons, they emerge into great, big, beautiful butterflies. So that's what we see happening around the world. Lovely words, and uh, thank you once again, and uh, see you soon. Thank you, thank you very much, Rahul. Thank you.